Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome episode at the Creative Collective where we think outside the box. We've got an awesome guest, Scotty. Tri- tri- well, I'm not going to butcher Scotty that. Scotty T. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Scotty T, man. Scotty T is here. He's going to be talking to us about business lines of credit and how we can uh, leverage that to uh, get more deals. Juan, go ahead, bro. Yeah. So I, I, I have two L's in my last name. So I need to make sure that we get this corrected. The way that I would pronounce his last name is Treguellas. But many Beautiful. people will say Tregellas, right? I think that's how <laughs> a lot of people pronounce it. But if we're going to say it the right way, it's Treguellas. Is that is that not right, Scotty? I well, mean, it's actually Greek. Oh, it's, it's Greek. Greek. So, <laughs> and then, so I had to ask um, someone that who was from Greece, how do you say my name? It was actually a real estate deal. A guy in California who owned a lot of properties was like trying to get this deal closed. You're Greek. You're from Greece. My name is Greek. How do you say this? Tregalis. I was oh, wow. Because I always say, you know, hey, it's Tregalis, but don't worry if you uh, mess it up. I don't even know if I say it right. So, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. but I mean, either, either way, man, Juan said it the most boss way ever. That but then trage- tregale- or Tregalis, that, that sounds like the 300. So, like, that sounds like the <laughs> right. Movie, man. Either way, either way, it just depends on what part of the world I'm in. That's right. Yeah, that's cool. Well, listen, we appreciate Scotty's um, time today uh, joining us on the show. Obviously, we love to bring value to this community uh, through many different ways of creating wealth. And what better way than creating wealth by leveraging credit and really having like the master join us today? Uh, I'm really excited that Scotty said yes to our invitation uh, for him to come out. Those of you that are going to get to hear this recording later on, this is going to bring so much value to you. Um, It has for me. Uh, We'll get into a little bit more about Scotty's and, you know, Scotty's uh, course and and mastermind that he's rolling out. Uh, I'm actually a student of his and I've been learning so much. uh, And I know for a fact, this is going to help you get to your the next level within your business whether you're looking to like start your business scale your business and then he gets into like these different aspects of how to leverage um credit and and so i guess if you want scotty why don't you like we we usually like to start out before we actually get into kind of like what you do what you're a master of we kind of like to find out a little bit more about you uh yeah. we talked a little bit right now before the uh before the recording but we'd like to hear a little bit more about you, your background, you know, how you got into real estate and ultimately how you got into kind of this space that you are a- an expert in. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I think it's great that one, you you joined the program, right? So you actually have an inside perspective of what I'm trying to give to the community, give back to the people. And the reason why I created that um, is one, I've spent multiple six figures in mentorship programs, education, uh, whether it be real estate or the credit industry. And I just feel like you never really get the true value, the, the direct answer that you're looking for. Um, and I, I was never really a big believer in, in being a guru or a mentor or anything like that. But I realized I'm doing myself a disservice and other people a disservice if I don't teach them the right way. So that's why I came up with the All in Credit VIP program. So it's very new. You were actually one of the very first people to join. So thank you. Oh, <laughs> so how I got into credit is because I wanted to get into real estate. So I'm not very widely known in the credit space. I'm known in the real estate space as the credit guy, right? My primary focus is real estate. I started in 2017, um, but I had really bad credit from 2015 to 2017 because I was in a really bad motorcycle accident. Um, I was being dumb. I wrecked at 130 plus mile an hour wow. and I couldn't walk, couldn't work wow. for over, around a year. So I lost everything. I was, uh, I was homeless, literally lost everything going through a breakup. I, at this time I was living, um, in the middle of the woods in a camper in, in Southeast Kansas. And, um, I wanted to get into real estate because I watched my stepdad develop custom homes all over the country, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, uh, Oklahoma City, uh, Summerlin, Las Vegas, Henderson, Las Vegas. He developed all these communities. Um, and so I just loved real estate. Didn't know anything about it though. Um, and I reached out to a guy 
who was doing real estate. And I said, Hey, I want to get into real estate. How do I do it? Well, you need to fix your credit first. So I paid a guy a lot of money to me at the time, everything I had like a thousand bucks and he didn't do anything, but I just don't have that like loser mentality. I'm not going to allow someone else to take an advantage of me, stop my vision and my goals. So that's when I started doing my own research. I uh, ended up repairing my own credit in less than 45 days. I went from a uh, 532 to a 741 in less than 45 days. Uh, at that point, I was able to get access to personal credit cards. And then I made a huge mistake. I invested 10 grand into a mentorship program, but that wasn't the mistake. The mistake that I made was by using the personal credit cards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I used the personal credit cards, maxed two of them out to pay for the Clever Investor Cody Sperber's mentorship program several years ago. But I closed $80,000 in wholesale fees the very next month. Changed my life, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand finances, financial literacy, like making that much money that fast. It just, it was a roller coaster ride, right? At this point, I still wasn't an expert at credit or anything like that. So over the past years, since you know 2015, 2017, 2018, all those years is just trial and error. I've made so many mistakes. Uh, I went from personal credit. Then I learned about business credit. I established that. And then I learned the bank rules, like the hidden bank rules that they won't tell us consumers that you can actually take advantage of to get access to even larger credit lines. So I, I had good personal credit at this point established the business credit, established the relationships. And that's when I started credit stacking. Um, so to this day, I have over a, a million in available credit limits. Wow. Um, and Damn. I just continuously cre keep applying for credit cards because the whole goal is to use 0% interest, mm. right? We can just continuously roll these funds over to 0% interest cards, right? And how does that pertain to real estate? Well, I've been able to go from homeless to quarter million dollar months, uh, being an investor lift cartel boss for a few years now, scaling nationwide, um, have a great wholesale operation. And now I'm to the point to where I know exactly the exact process that I need to do to start scale or buy a business. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago, I didn't realize that I knew something different than anybody else. I didn't understand the value until I was at an Investor Lift Cartel Boss Summit in uh, Dominican Republic. And if anyone isn't familiar with Investor Lift, um, you have to make a quarter million a month in assignment fees to be a cartel boss. And every year we meet up somewhere and we just mastermind. Well, I found out I was the only person, person there that flew first class using credit card points, right? Um, Lance, you were just here in Vegas for Pineda's event. Pineda was there with me. It was him and I were talking. He's like, Scotty, I have 670,000 Amex points. What do I do with these? I usually just exchange them for cash. I'm like, well, that's 6,700 bucks, but I could get you around $80,000 worth of travel. You could go to Bora Bora, take your entire family, fly first class and stay there for a month for free. Right. So what's it worth to you? Right. Wow. And yeah. No, and crazy. then there's other people who are spending literally six figures a month in marketing. And I'm like, oh, wow, what, what credit card are you using? Right. Because you must be a, ha, accumulating a lot of points. Oh, just this other credit card that they get no rewards from or just straight out of their bank account. I'm like, interesting. That's pretty risky. Right. We don't ever want to use our own cash. What if COVID happens again? What if the interest rates spike you know, another six, six percent? Right. Everything slows down. And if you're spending six figures a month in marketing, by the time it picks back up, you just spend a half a million dollars before you got a return. That's risky. Where my perspective is, why don't we take that risk and put it on zero percent interest credit? Mm -hmm. Where in worst case scenario, if the world stops for six months, we have a one percent a month payment. Now, that's a lot more affordable. So now we have that safety net of having liquid cash in our bank. And also funds over here with 0% interest to continuously keep our business operational, right? That's when I realized, wow, I actually, I know something that people way more successful than me doing way more than me, they're not using or implementing their business. And Juan, that's when I decided to come up with, uh, you know, the all-in credit VIP program. Man, that's, that's awesome, bro. So, yeah, so definitely want to get into that program, right? Because I definitely mm -hmm. want you to kind of go through the pillars 
of what this rounded um, leveraging of, of credit should be, right? I think I think we all kind of focus on one aspect or another. And the way that you teach it here, right, through that program is you identify these four columns that work well with each other, but there's a certain order by which you actually should be following, right? Kind of like a foundational level and then kind of working your way up. Kind of walk us through that. Walk us through that that program you got and, and kind of how you would actually set up those pillars to kind of build upon each other. Mm -hmm. Well, it's simple. And as a visionary, we kind of think backwards. And so that's how I, I kind of start to explain people, right? The end goal is obviously financial freedom, being able to buy real estate, being able to have access to those funds anytime that you need them, right? Um, and then of course, the traveling. Everyone loves to travel. Why not travel for free? So uh -huh. in order to be able to accomplish that, we have to accumulate the points. In order to accomplish that, we have to have the credit cards, right? We have to know how to use those credit cards, know what to what credit cards to apply for, when, why, where, uh, what to put on the applications, right? What to use them on. But before you can get access to those, you have to have established business credit. Um, and then before that, you should always maintain a 740 plus personal credit score, right? Mm -hmm. So now working forward, we always have to focus on you, the individual. You are the base foundation of all of this. So credit repair is extremely possible. I actually uh, specialize in the five-day credit sweep. Uh, that's repairing credit in less than five days. Um, I, it's very, very detailed videos. One, I don't know if you've went through those or not. Very detailed, very successful. Um, it removes items in less than five business days. So the whole goal is to get everyone at 740 plus across the board and then establishing business credit for your EIN. Now, a lot of mistakes that I see people make, especially in the real estate industry, is uh, choosing the wrong NAICS code. What that is, it's basically just a code, an internal code where banks and lenders, they identify you um, and what industry you're in, right? So they, they can, if they plug in your NAICS code and they see your real estate, you're considered high risk, right? If they plug in this NAICS code and see, oh, your credit repair, oh, you're high risk, and they'll deny you. Right. Chase actually denied me a half, a, they offered me a half a million dollar line of credit. And then was like, wait, no, you're in real estate. It's too high risk. And then that's when it mm. clicked. Wait, my wholesale operation is not a real estate investment company. It's a marketing company. So that's when I go back into the secretary of state, mm. change my NAICS code to marketing. Now I just became that much more credible and lendable to the banks because I'm no longer high risk right? What is my credit company? Is it finances? No, it's consulting. Very low risk to lenders. So, you know, I talk to like CPAs and whatnot, and you can flip real estate, but the best way to do it is to kind of create an umbrella corporation and then create funding around that and just filters down to every single one. And you can literally 10X every single entity that you create. It's really set up like a rinse and repeat process. And that's mm. how major corporations do that, right? They just filter money within each LLC. I've got over 50 credit cards, a million dollars. And this is just two of my LLCs. That's man. It's nuts. So, so you know, yeah. here, here's a very interesting thing. Um, so I'm not going to name the company that I actually went through to establish business credit. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to drop their name, their name, but what I found out after actually going through this you know, this course, right? I've been looking at your videos and getting really familiar with it, with the process. I actually went back to this this company because they were like, "Okay, you 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 did the steps that we asked you to do. Now go ahead and start applying for business credit." And I said, mm, "I wasn't comfortable with just listening to what they said. I took what you said about this whole thing. I'm like, okay, I am at a 740 credit score, right?" But then I realized that some of the credit cards that I have a little bit higher in utilization. And I was like, you know what? I don't think I should apply until I can get these credit cards reduced on my personal credit. Then I apply. And so I went back to them and, and told them that. And they came back and said, yeah, actually, that works better. Wait, reduce it. And I'm like, why isn't this something that you should have told me? Right. Because right. if I'm somebody that's coming to you for the expertise, I'm expecting you to give me all of this information without me having to figure it out for myself. That's the whole reason why I'm hiring you. Yep. And that's, you know, I'm 
I may or may not know. I'm going to assume the company you're talking about. And the, the difference is their, their goal is just to shotgun applications, right? Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it's there isn't a strategic way behind those applications. What that is, is they have their referral codes or they make money on how much they get you approved for. I don't do that. I believe that's highway robbery. If my goal is to get you in an, a, a quarter of a million dollars, I want you to have a quarter of a million dollars to invest into your businesses. I don't want to take 10% of that, right? That's a major red flag to me. So uh, would never do that. But I these companies- that yeah, like it's just robbery, right? Yeah. Um, they shotgun these applications and out of order. They do that because it's a part, they have back end partnerships and referral links and stuff like that. Well, when you do it out of order, remember those bank rules we were talking about, Juan, those bank rules. If you do it out of order, you're likely to get denied and you're very mm -hmm. likely to get way smaller limits. Because what I teach you is how to get approved for 50 to $100,000 credit limits not 10, 20, 30. Mm. And it all starts again by you personally, right? Hey, Juan, do you have a personal credit card with at least a $10,000 limit? Yes or no? Yes. Yes? Okay. So we know that if we strategize your applications, you shouldn't get less than three to five X your personal limit. Mm. And that's just average. Of course, there are smaller and mid-tier banks like credit unions, uh, the F FNBO, you know, smaller banks, their their biggest limits are around 15 grand. But the yeah. top tier banks like Chase, US Bank, Bank of America, Amex, these can be very, very, very high limits if you apply with a strategy. Right. Yeah, wow. no, that makes all the sense in the world, man. This is mm -hmm. this is fire, bro. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, you know, your your knowledge, of course. Um, so now we're going through the through the four four aspects of the course right the four columns you're talking about personal being the foundation making sure that we got to get your personal straight you got to get your personal credit right um one of the things that you talked about the five-day credit sweep is also removing uh erroneous uh you know erroneous um entries right in your credit report reviewing it i think a lot of us i, I know for myself and maybe i i, I don't want to speak for anybody else but you look at those reports and they could be daunting, right? They're like, oh my gosh, it's so like just frustrating to go through. Um, but from what I understand is you offer two types of courses, if you will. You It's either two types or, or I don't know how many types, but you have one that's kind of like, you let that individual pick their own way of following the course um, if they want to actually do the 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 actual credit sweep, et cetera, themselves. You have a hand-holding one and then you kind of have like a VIP, you do it all for them, right? Essentially, yeah. Um, you know, and the it was actually in Norway with Robert Winsley. Uh, he said, "Get away from all fulfillment. Get away. Get away. Get away." Right, and um, that's really the only way to scale. But I actually have four clients, all individually worth over a quarter of a billion each. <laughs> they kind of just want to pay you to do it for them, right? right. So we we kind of right. have to keep that open. And I am a multi business owner. I know I get super busy. Yeah. To be honest, my team is in the office here doing my five-day sweep right now, removing business inquiries. So I don't even do it for myself anymore, right? So we do have that available right, right, right. for you know business owners. And there's two options. There's done with you and done for you. Uh, done okay. for you, I don't care to learn it. I just want it done for me. Done with you, um, obviously it's cheaper. And the whole goal is about 60% of us doing the work, but we're teaching you how to do it. Um, and then, of course, the program. I mean, it, it's super low entry. Uh, the goal there is just to be able to teach every single thing I know, right? Because if you go to right, the company you used, you don't, you don't know what they're doing, why they're doing it, or when they tell you to do something, they're not explaining it. Right. I want to give away everything I know. And here's a little, this is how much I give away. Four people have went out and started their own credit solutions, credit repair company by just going mm -hmm. through my program. Wow. Like I don't want it, take it, you know? That's awesome. So, yeah. That's great, dude. That's great. That's that's how much value you you, you get back. So um, we appreciate that, man. So tell us a little bit about, um, as we build up on these credits, right? Mm -hmm. you, you started out personal. Now you will focus on the business credit. And what is credit stacking? 
So credit stacking is literally just how it sounds. It's stacking credit cards together, but applying in a strategic way. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. you're just, you got to, your credit stacking. We are stacking credit. And the way to do that is, again, like I said, we have to apply in a strategic order. Why? Going back to those bank rules. Let's just use Chase. Everyone knows Chase. And Chase does have the best credit cards out there, okay, followed by Amex. Well, Chase has an internal bank rule. On the personal side, the 5 for 24 rule. Has anyone yeah. heard of that before? No. If you've opened five revolving accounts, so five credit card accounts within the past 24 months, you will automatically be denied by Chase. Okay. Ooh. But on the other flip side, that doesn't count for business credit cards. Okay. So it's like just knowing there's two rules. Wow. I could have added an inquiry, been denied, and added an inquiry affected my personal credit score. But now I know not to apply on the personal side. Okay. Well, let's go over here and apply it for one of their business cards. They have three, but we also know that you as an individual with your single social security, you can only have two of those three cards. They're the Inc. Unlimited, Inc. Preferred, and Inc. Cash. Okay, so me, myself, I have the Inc. Unlimited, 80,000, uh, 0% interest for 12 months. And I have the Inc. Preferred for another business, but I have the Inc. Cash, okay? So you really have to choose which one of these uh, of the preferred and unlimited that you wanna go with. Because if you apply either the 0% interest or the high rewards on ad spend, right? So you kind of have to pick and choose, but knowing that rule and then knowing the benefits of those cards and knowing what you're going to be using them for can help you with that decision. But knowing that you cannot have both of those will prevent you from applying for that other one and getting denied and getting another inquiry and it affecting your personal credit score, right? But what about the cherry on top? How do we get around that? Scotty, you just said you had all three. How's that possible? Well, I have multiple businesses, but what if you have a partner? What if you have a husband or a wife who is a partner on the LLC? Here's where you start really stacking. So Juan, you and I are partners, all right? We both own 50%. I'm gonna go into Chase. I know we're just starting our wholesale operation and we know that our average turnaround is around 90 days. Let's go ahead and spend 20 grand a month in PPC. We both have great credit. I'm going to go after the Chase Inc. Unlimited because we're limited on cash. We have $0. I'm going to go after the Chase Inc. Unlimited because they give very high limits. And also it's 0% interest for 12 months. Okay. Now what I'm going to have you do, because you have a different social security number, you're going to go immediately apply for the Chase Inc. Preferred. Again, high limits, 4X return on ad spend. We're going to use that for the PPC. We're going to use the unlimited for everything else. Now, here's what we're both going to go do. Okay. Two and a half, three months later, after we get our sign up bonuses, pay, you know, do that little hack where we get our rewards, we're going to go both apply for the ink cash card. So now we literally just stacked four credit cards when Chase tells you, you can only have two. <laughs> Man. Dude, this this is this is fire, bro. So let me let me give you a little testimonial, guys, um, on on what happened with me. So I actually reached out to Scotty a while back. This is before he even had the course, and I I knew who he was through Investor Lift, and so um, I was barely working with this other company, this other credit you know credit company, if you will. And I have a bad relationship with with Chase. I had a bankruptcy a long long time ago. So Chase is like written me off, right? They're like psh, red flag, right? Uh, get out of here. Like, don't even, don't even come and apply. So I reach out to Scotty and we're like talking through kind of like, okay, man, how can I start? Like, I want to build some credit immediately, right? I want to start scaling. I want to start putting some, some funds to work. I reach out to Scotty. We have a quick, quick session. We sit down. He kind of goes through a little bit about my history and kind of finds out a little bit about me and he laid it out. He just said, look, this is what you do. You do this, you do this, you do this. Here's the, re the, the result was I got a, I got a 25 K credit card from chase, like within like a week. And Damn. I mean, it was just, it was just listening to him and following like his every step of what he asked me, what he told me to do. I was like, Okay, Scotty, whatever, man. I don't think this is gonna work. Like, you don't understand. Like, Chase has literally like sent me multiple letters, you know, like leave leave us alone, basically. And the way that he walked me through it was like, um, it, it was key. 
But here's the one thing that that Scotty, you know, kind of pointed out, and I, and I'll let you kind of speak to this, Scotty. You talked about relationships and how important relationships are when building credit or applying for credit. So one of the strategies that he told me to do was like, hey, don't just go online and just apply for the credit card, you know, blindfold, right? It's like these guys don't know who you are. They, they're you're a number. And you know how easy it is to, to say no to a number? It's mm -hmm. very easy, right? He goes, go down to the branch, right? Establish a relationship, like open up a bank account, go through the process of meeting that banker. And that's exactly what I did. I got, I mean, I, I ended up finding out that the guy who was my, who became my banker is someone that I actually, like, we grew up together in L.A., so there we were like just what? talking about we're just talking about like this whole thing about like you know LA and growing up there and all this stuff and so guess what <laughs> we just leveraged each other's like I just leveraged his relationship right and what we knew about each other and next thing you know he's helping me apply and taking the application with his own hands walking it across the hallway to the uh you know the the actual business credit specialist and lo and behold getting me that that uh, that credit approved so anyways i just wanted to share that testimonial man that that worked out so great and i appreciate that scotty that's awesome man no that that's great i um so to kind of explain what he did uh relationships are very key especially with top tier banks chase bank of america us bank the bigger banks want to know who you are um especially if you're going to go in and ask for 50 to 100 thousand dollar limit credit cards uh, so I always, with the top tier banks, I always suggest uh, establishing a relationship with them. The more, the better, right? The more they know you, the better. You can you can start a relationship by either just having a personal credit card, personal bank account, business bank account, or all three is amazing. Um, so places like Chase, I if it's local to you, it wasn't where I lived in Kansas uh, at the time. So if it is local to you, definitely go open up a Chase bank account, personal and business. Um, we call it bank hacking where I will literally move like all my funds. I use the profit first system. So I have like a crap ton of bank accounts. So I literally move like, everything to one bank. And now I all of a sudden look super qualified to them. And sure. so it's like, okay, there's my strategy. The golden now, goose. Yes. I'm worthy of a credit card. Right. <laughs> so that's really the perspective we're trying to give these banks is yes, I'm, I'm, I'm worthy of this credit card. And now you know who I am. But when you open up a bank account, it's also important to one, give them the right NAICS, AICS code. So you're not high risky. Uh, two, not applying for anything immediately. Okay. Deposit. I've seen people get approved for 60K with just a few hundred bucks, but we typically suggest at least five grand, let it season for two weeks. Um, because if you say, yes, my business is projected to do 1.5, 1.2 million this year, they're going to say, ah, you're immediately qualified to sit down with the business relationship manager. So would you like to talk to one? There's one in office today. No, no, I, I'll come back in a couple of weeks. I'd love to set up an appointment. What does that do? It doesn't, the reason why we delayed that conversation is because your money is sitting in Chase for a couple of weeks. Now Chase in the background sees that. So you come back, meet with the relationship manager, which Juan, it sounds like your friend was. You don't have to know this person. It is their job to serve you, right? Here's the biggest kicker when meeting with the business relationship manager. Say, hey, I want to go in. I want to apply for the Chase Inc. Unlimited. You get to request your credit limits. If you apply online, you're just another person. You're just another number getting yeah. hit with an algorithm. They're reading yeah. your profile. They're not looking if you have a relationship with Chase. They're not looking at anything like that. They're just looking at your data. But when you're applying in person, you get to request your limit. I regret not asking for more. It was too easy to get 80K. Um, but now, like Juan, you had someone inside of Chase personally referring to the underwriters, the decision makers, for your approval for that limit. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. And then, all of course, there's always reconsideration lines. If you're ever denied, always call the reconsideration line. Have them explain why. And I actually lost my relationship with Chase Bank as well. Um, and I dumped all my money in there. I closed my accounts, dumped all my money in there. 
an 836, 37 credit score. I applied for um, a credit card and was denied. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. I was denied again. Um, and I called and it took four different relationship or underwriters talking to four different ones. And one was like, you know what? I'm, I don't know why you're getting denied. Boom, approval. I've never <laughs> been denied since. Right. So it's just refurbishing that relationship. It's not impossible. Right. Man, that's great. That's great. So I know in about 15 minutes, we're going to open up the, the the floor for for questions. I'm sure a lot of people have, sure. have some questions. Right. Um, but I definitely wanted to get into that fourth column, man, because that's the one mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people, like, especially me, myself, I know for sure, get excited about. And that's, you know, travel hacking. Right. How do how do we leverage all of these points to to really have these free trips. When you when you told when you said that story about, you know, going with all these cartel bosses, mm -hmm. um, you know, and 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 realizing that you were the only one that went out there for free because you leveraged your travel points, I was like, I, I just like was downfounded by it. I was like, so I'm sure you were you were as well. So yeah. um obviously I want to get to that to that point where I'm just leveraging travel hacking. So explain to us what is travel hacking and then really how you how you actually come to leverage it. Absolutely. So again, it all starts by running it backwards, knowing what your expenses are. Okay. And then knowing what credit cards you should use for those specific expenses. All right. And then of course, the three main chase American express and capital one with those three, you can transfer the points outside of chase Amex and capital one to travel partners. And leveraging those and transferring them around and using them the right way, you can literally 10x the value of those points. So those are the three banks and credit cards that we want to look at first, okay? Of course, if you want to travel. Now, what are we spending on? Let's just talk real estate, a wholesale operation, right? Tens of thousands a month in marketing. I want to use either the Amex Gold because it's 4x points. And it's a, tra it's a transferable partner card. So the Amex Gold. But we know that the Amex Gold is a charge card, right? Not a credit card. We have If we use $10,000 a month, we have to pay it off the next month. Okay, well, what if we, we don't have the cash reserves? What if deals aren't closing consistently? Then I want to put it on a credit card. Okay, I'm going to look at the Chase Inc. Preferred because I get 4X rewards on, on ad spin. And I can transfer those out to travel partners. So just knowing what cards to use on what expense... All right. And then, of course, taking advantage of the sign up bonuses as soon as they come up, um, you can have you can set alerts uh, from certain banks and credit cards. Alert me when new offers come out. Um, sometimes you'll receive them in the mail. Huge offers. I've seen Amex go all the way up to 190 point, 190,000. Oh, now, wow. remember that number, 190,000. If you spend 15,000 the first three months, remember 190,000 because one that. Norway trip I just took my wife on with Robert Winsley. So our flights there cost $29,000. I paid $101, but my points, I only used 174,000. So you do the math, the dollar cost. Yes, I had to spend money to get these rewards and points. But of course, we're doing that anyways. As business owners, we're doing it anyways. Right. So you might as well get rewarded by it. Right. Using the right cards and knowing how to transfer them out. Man, that's that's nuts. You also said you went to a New Zealand trip, right? How yeah. how much was that out of pocket? So New Zealand, we we, we did New Zealand. Uh we eloped. We got married. <laughs> we got married in New Zealand. Then we went to Fiji. Then we went back to New Zealand because it's just beautiful. Um, and the flights there, I've got it pulled up. I don't know the, the flights there and back, but total cash value was 40, 40,000. Uh, and I spent less than 2,000. Man, that's, that's nuts. <laughs> and less than 600,000 points. Man, that is, that's awesome. Man, that is, that is great. Thanks so much for sharing um, so much, so much knowledge, so much information here. I'm sure everybody in the, in the uh, community here appreciates it. And so first and foremost, we thank you for your time. And I know we're going to get into some questions here, guys. Um, our hosts, 
just so you know, uh, Scotty is is Justin, Damon, and and Lance. Uh, we put on this show every single week. We just try to bring value to the community, and um, you're definitely doing that tonight, man. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, man, congratulations. Hey, Con congrats hey, on the marriage, man. Just wanted to tell thank you. you. Thank you. Sorry, man. Hey, hey, Juan. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me, do you mind if I jump in for like one yeah, second? Yeah, of course. Man? Yeah, jump in, man. So like, <clears throat> obviously, man, I've got a, awesome. I got a ton of, a ton of questions that I could ask you, but um, I'm a, I'm a business owner and kind of like you, I have multiple businesses, right? But um, I'll be the first one to say I'm not nearly as educated as you when it comes to, to credit, right? So I have roughly about $100,000 in credit on the personal side, but I obviously have quite a, quite a few different businesses and I restitute, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars in each one of those. But <clears throat> I'm trying to wonder about how I could do that more effectively, right? Because from what you're saying on the personal side, like having too much credit on the personal side can be kind of a killer for you on the business side, right? Correct. So I'm wondering if you could delve into that a little bit more if you're looking at, let's say, like a high income earner who, you know, really wants to use that business credit to buy more properties. I'd, I'd love to do the, the sub two thing and be able to do entry, you know, on properties and then let those properties pay back. And so my goal this year is to purchase right around 20 or so, 20 to 30 properties. <clears throat> if, if, you were, if you were me and you were looking at that, you know, like, what do you think a game plan might be? Like get rid of some of the, the personal credit and then start to venture more towards picking up more business credit? Or I guess I'm a little confused there. Like what, what would good. you do? You're good at 100,000. Um, honestly, I have too much personal credit, but unfortunately <laughs> every personal credit card I apply for, they keep giving me $30,000 limits. Um, I don't want that. It's too much because yes, some banks, when you're applying for a business card, will see, remember your personal credit profile, that's what they're seeing. So when they see too much there, they can say, Hey, you have too much. Therefore, we're not going to give you very much over here. But over here on the business side is where we want the limits. Why? Because we can max those out at 100% and it not affect us on the personal side. We can still, out, we can still go buy a new car, you know, get a mortgage, whatever. Uh, so the, you're good at 100K. The strategy I would go with is one, establishing business credit around your EINs. It's a very easy process. You just rinse and repeat for each one. Um, and then... You just need about five trade lines, honestly, some net 30s. You really, you don't have to do anything else after that. Add at least three to five trade lines, get that 80 paydex score. Now you're able to leverage both your good personal and your business credit. Okay. Um, and then as far as like business credit cards. So, you know, I buy sub two properties. Um, we assign a, a crap load of them. Um, that's how we buy them. So zero, how do we buy real estate? with credit cards. It's liquidation, not cash advance. You can have a $100,000 limit credit card and it's 0% interest. But as soon as you take a cash advance, you're paying super high interest. And it's very limited. I think I'm at $2,500 on the $80,000 0% card. It's not worth it, right? But Damon, you own multiple businesses as I do. We have merchants set up. You can pay yourself one business to another business now you have cash in the bank. Now that business can buy that real estate. Or there are people out there do, that do liquidation services and just charge like 2% on top of service fees, which is around four. So on average, people are charging 6% to liquidate your cards. So if they do have a merchant that is seasoned and can do high limits, Damon, if you went out and got a $50,000 limit credit card, 0% interest, uh, you wanted to buy a sub two house entry is, you know, 10,000, uh, maybe rehabs another 10,000. What I would say is here, I'm going to charge you 10,000. Oh, you didn't want my service. I'm going to wire that back to you as a refund. I'm going to wire it, not refund it. Now you have $10,000 cash in your bank. Go ahead and send that to the title company, right? You can still mm -hmm. use that credit card on all rehab costs. You know what? Now that you have business credit established, why don't you use that business credit to go out to Home Depot and Lowe's and get a credit card there or a line of credit? Hey, if you're paying, if you're, if you're, you know, paying guys, 
using Amex, right? How many, how, how many uh, people have been ripped off by you know, people not doing the work, right? So Amex is, you have a lot of protection with Amex and credit cards. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that that's what I would do. Always use the credit cards because with that $10,000 expense, you just got rewarded for that as well. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking, right? You could maybe pick up some of those sub two properties. Obviously some of you want to mm-hmm. keep for yourself, but you know, others you want to go ahead and flip them and then turn them over. Um, and that makes a lot of sense that you're talking about doing that. And I was thinking, well, you know, if I had a, let's say a, a realty company and then a property management company, well, you could maybe stack those cards as well, right? For each company. Mm-hmm. And then you can, use those in the way that you're talking about right absolutely absolutely man, no, yep. yeah that's that's a, that's a great idea man yeah we're gonna have to talk more man absolutely. <laughs> anytime <laughs> yeah yeah lee well <clears throat> I'll, I'll say this hey lance do you have any questions for scotty like while we're while we're at it i don't know if lance is even in here man no i'm my i'm just trying to absorb everything my mind is being blown it's so lot, i'm kind of yeah it's drinking water crap, from the fire hose yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> but what I want to do is maybe open the floor to some folks to ask questions because, man, there's been a lot of cl- questions um, <clears throat> flowing through the chat. So I don't know if you'd be open for that, Scotty. Maybe absolutely. Um, you know, hit 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 the floor with a few questions and and see if you can't answer them for people. So guys, put your hand up if you're wanting to maybe uh, ask Scotty a question. Um, Go ahead and jump in. Don't be shy. And uh, let's see if we can't get you guys in to uh, have Scotty ask answer a few questions. How about that? I'll, yeah. I'll kick it off with a question. Yep. Okay. I knew it. Hey, Scotty. Thanks for having or coming on here today. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I just, I just wanted to ask, so, you know, you're talking about bringing on a lot of credit, a lot of money uh, to people, um, uh, to people's businesses. Um, first, how do you suggest people manage, um, you know, setting up, paying those off and and just sort of keeping track of all that because it can get really confusing. Um, and then secondly, you know, uh, every, with everything rosy, your your business works out and and everything is is, you know, headed in the right direction. But let's say someone stumbles along the way and and, you know, their business fails. Walk us through that process, too. Absolutely. So to answer your first question, and this is something that everyone should do, whether you have two credit cards or 50 like me, you can change the due date on every single one of your credit cards. Every single one of my credit cards is due on the 15th. I pay them on the first, right? Because there's three dates that you want to remember the reporting date, statement date, and due date. The due date, you want to set automatic minimum payments, minimum payments always on the due date. Okay. But really, I have an internal calendar that tells me, hey, pay your credit cards. So I want to pay my credit cards two weeks before my due date. That way, the balance isn't reporting on my credit. Therefore, it's not affecting the utilization, right? So that's how I manage all my cards. And then, of course, there's plenty of apps like Nerd Wallet, um, Award Wallet uh, that you can keep track of your credit cards, the spend, the the rewards you're accumulating and so on and so forth. Award Wallet is one that I use personally. Um, but changing the date on your due date is is definitely the best way to keep track of, oh, when's that credit card due? And then minimum payments, remember, is just 1% of the balance uh, that's left on the statement date. That's your minimum payment, okay? Um, and of course, that's without interest, okay? 1% and then plus interest if it's not a 0% interest card. So now going to your second question of um, businesses fail, stuff happens. I, I mean, I, I was, it was a roller coaster ride. I didn't have financial literacy when I first started making money. I didn't know how to properly use every credit card or scale properly. Right. Um, There was times where I had business credit cards maxed out and I wasn't making any money, but what I made sure of is I always paid the minimum payment, right? There's been, you know, a year plus that I've just been riding the minimum payments doesn't do anything for me, but it also doesn't hurt me. Why? Because it's a business credit card and it's not reporting to personal. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think a lot of times people, you know, they, they see these, um, the, these 
credit card um, programs and and just see free money. And, and really mm -hmm. what, what you're saying is you got to pay it back. It's just that you can prolong that over time, obviously. And, and you want to really make sure that you're setting it up, set, setting your business up so that it's successful to, so that you're paying every single month and, and paying off as much or all of it as possible. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And I've also heard of some credit cards where you can actually pay your mortgage or rent. Do you want to talk to that? Because I know that that's a, a great hack where you you know, you can accumulate points. Um, what's your largest expense most of the time as a personal, you know, personal credit side. And so what do you suggest there? Absolutely. It is the built credit card. I actually have it somewhere <laughs> in here. Um, it's the built credit card, B-I-L-T. Um, it's great. Um, you can only pay one mortgage or rent um, with that credit card, but it's uh, one point per dollar, I believe. Yeah, one point per dollar. Um, so yeah, I mean, I pay my office rent, um, here in Vegas on my bill card. I get rewarded. It is backed by Wells Fargo. Uh, mm -hmm. you don't really have to have a relationship uh, with Wells Fargo to get approved for this card. Um, but what's cool about the built card is you can actually transfer those points out to travel partners, just like you can with Amex, Chase, right. and Capital One. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a, uh, under the radar uh hack that a lot of people aren't using yeah yeah that card is less than two years old yeah there you go cool hey, good. all right monica well, you, you hear me unmute yeah. and there you go come out come on and ask come on me. up monica hey hi everyone thank you for this podcast it's amazing um Scotty, uh, so nice to meet you. I'm, I'm probably going to reach out to you and take your course because this is right up my alley. Um, I have a question. How do you handle online purchases? I've had my credit card fraudulently used left and right. Chase, thank God Chase is so on top of it. Mm -hmm. But um, so I started using PayPal just to cover myself because I think in the last two years, I've replaced my credit card with Chase. Um Maybe seven times. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think that's a different issue. That could be someone might have access to like your email or something like that. Um, but you're changing the account number every time you replace the card. Um, so it has to be something a little deeper than just someone finding your credit card online. Um, but the best way to do that is obviously pay for a um, credit monitoring system. Um, luckily, yes, Chase is great. Um, yeah, Chase is great. They, they text you, did you do this? I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. And then yeah. they, they send it through. So they're great. Amex is great on, okay, hey, this is fraudulent. We're going to give you the money back. So right. that's why I always advise never use a debit card. Never. Um, you know, I almost messed up and forgot my debit card here in America when I went to Norway, but you know, because they don't take Amex, but I, we never use a debit card uh, because we know that there's so many like safety precautions with credit cards and they'll, yeah. they'll take care of you if that is the case. Yeah. Okay. But you do use them online, your credit card. Absolutely. I use credit cards for everything because that's their money, not mine. Okay. Okay. And then the other question I had for you, I hope you don't mind, but um, what well, do you mean transfer over to travel partners outside? Yeah. So when you are using a credit card, let's just use M American Express, you're accumulating these points, okay? Right. And when you have these credit cards, you get a a portal, right, where you log yeah. in and you can, you know, travel and whatnot. And you can actually pay for travel within that portal. It's uh -huh. not worth it. With Amex, Chase, and Capital One and Built, you can actually take those points and transfer them out to partners. Now, partners are airline and hotel. It's like United, Delta, Southwest, American, um, all of them, you know, in the world are partners of these banks and then hotels, um, you know, mm -hmm. Hyatt, um, Hilton, Marriott, mm -hmm. you can transfer them out and your points are worth so much more in their portal versus uh, the credit card portal. Are you saying that if I'm a United Airlines, there's an option for me to use my Chase credit card points, absolutely. my award absolutely. points? Yeah, oh, I've never, I've never seen that option. Okay, and good it's, to it's, know. It's very simple. The hardest part about travel hacking, 
really the biggest secret to travel hacking is just being able to tr be flexible with the dates. That's really okay. it. Um, okay. And it's not hard to transfer at all. What you'll want okay. to do is just go shop for the dates, look at the point price, not the dollar price. Um, okay, we know that I want to travel out within these three days. And I see, okay, well, Monday, it only costs me 150,000 points instead of 300,000 points on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I know okay. I'm traveling out Monday, right? So now you have to make an account with United, right? Make the right. account. Now you log into Amex and manage points. You put transfer, uh -huh. transfer, you know, it costs 150,000 points. Okay. Transfer your Amex over to United. Now you oh. have those points within United. You just book with points. Boom. Nice. Only thing you have to pay is taxes. Just a few bucks. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Very, very awesome. easy. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Sweet. Thank you, Monica. Thanks for the great questions. Anyone else, Nadine, you had your hand up. Are you, did you get your question answered or? I did. Hi, everyone. Awesome. It's Sadia. Thanks for this info. It's super mind blowing. Sure. Um, Absolutely. So I, I wanted to ask, what is the typical time frame to scale business credit up to a hundred and hundred thousand if you are maintaining a, a score of 740 or above, like you mentioned, you've got those trade lines opened. And um, yeah, what what is the typical time frame to do that? And also at what point do we discontinue those trade lines? Is it once we get to the desired credit limit? Um, and also, sorry, one last thing is, is there a negative impact if you were to discontinue the trade lines prior to getting to a like a hundred thousand? Mm -hmm. So when you say trade lines, are you meaning credit cards, like business credit sorry, cards? To get to the desired business credit is what I okay. mean. And yes, the trade lines meaning opening up the net thirties and you okay. know that All stuff. All right. So to establish the business credit, what getting the eighty paydex score, you really only need three to establish that score. Typically, we we suggest minimum five, right? And then you can decide to work your way up the tier if you want. If you want to go out and buy the G Wagon with business credit, you really can, but not like how TikTok says, right? There's a lot more right. to it. You have to have at least 20, 30 trade lines reporting before, you know, Mercedes is going to give you a $400,000 car, but it is possible. But really, the whole goal for us is just to get access to the credit cards, the 0% interest, so we can use those for our business. You really only need three, three to five. And you can accomplish that all within the first round. Um, and you could, I've done it so much. I can get done with that, with a brand new business in a day. But here's what we have to wait on. It's out of our control is when you go out and open up those accounts and apply for those net 30s, you have to buy something, spend a minimum of $100. When the statement comes in in two weeks, you pay it immediately. Well, now they legally have 30 to 45 days to report that. So what just happened, we, out of our control, we had to wait almost two months for those to report. So on average, if you're very aggressive, it should take about two months, two, three months tops to accomplish that 80 paid X. Now you do not ever have to do anything ever again. I think I established my business credit in like 2018 and I've never added anything else to it. So. Okay. Yeah. So you can really much. stop. And that's to get to a hundred thousand. So the the hundred thousand are you meaning like credit cards? Because credit, the trade yeah. lines, right? Those are those are just really net thirty ninety day. Uh, you can do store, you can do fleet cards, um, but those don't really count as funding to me. These do. Oh. I can do whatever I want with these. I can liquidate yeah. these, turn them into cash. I can I can buy anything, including real estate. Right. So. Okay. To get to 100,000 with this, if you have an 80 paid X score and a 740 a week. Wow, really? Yeah, because we know exactly what cards that you should be applying for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So on, on average, my average credit stacking sequence, of course, if our clients hit all the data points of 740 personal credit score, relationship, 80 paid X, um, is $223,000 per sequence. And we can do that every quarter. That's amazing. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That's I all mean, I mean, Scotty comes in here, blows everybody's mind, and then <laughs> makes it seem like, oh, well, it's just that easy. You just, <laughs> you just do it like that, right? Like, 
T tons and tons of knowledge, right? Lots of lots of years of doing this and tons and tons of knowledge makes mm -hmm. it sound so easy. Yeah. That's why I'm a huge believer in surround yourself with those that know better than you and mm -hmm. they'll show you the fast road to get there, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, man, I love it. So, hey, man, really quick, Scotty, I want you to be able to, to kind of let everybody know where you're at. You know, uh, can you give them your IG or your Facebook, um, you know, wherever is best to reach you at. Yeah, I'll just, it's just my first and last name um, everywhere. Okay. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And I will just type it here in the chat. Um, usually you can just type in Scotty T and I'm the first one up there. Usually. Yeah, he's a, he's a brand. Not only is he coming <laughs> to quite. help him with credit, he can help you with your branding too. <laughs> um <laughs> Pretty soon, yeah, hey, pretty, really soon, pretty soon he's going to drop the T and just be Scotty and everybody. Yeah. Will... yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Um, really quick, man. Could you, I, I just want you to explain a little bit about your program that you have coming up. Cause I'm sure some people may be interested about that and in, in getting involved. Can you explain, you know, to the listeners how they might come and get involved with your program? Absolutely. Absolutely. So really the, the process of that is super, super simple. Um, it's, as soon as you join, we're going to send you a text message and an email. With that email, um, you're going to get access to a private Facebook community where I'm always trying to drop bombs, uh, free game one, you're in there, I'm, credit card offers, partnerships. Um, we have so many people. It's, it's, it's a growing community that's only around 50 people right now. But uh, I mean, there's four people in there worth over a quarter billion dollars. There's people in every real estate uh, venture, venture capitalists, uh, capital raisers, right. Hedge fund owners. It's insane. Uh, the community, um, I've partnered up with, uh, black girls in real estate out of Atlanta. They have 200,000 members and I am now helping uh, them with all the same process of getting into real estate. Uh, so I'm just trying to serve as many people as possible because I realized the only reason why I am where I am today is because I had to learn the credit game first. Um, so that again, Juan, that, Hey, that's why I created that program. And as a service, uh, I realized I can't help more than 10 people a month, but now I can help a thousand. So the program is real simple. As soon as you join, you, um, you download my ebook, which has the five day suite step-by-step -step guide into it. That's where you're removing any negatives on the personal item. And you're removing these business credit inquiries immediately as, as, as they're coming in, you're removing them. They're coming in, you're removing them. It's a rinse and repeat cycle. Um, you'll also, you'll also have a link in the very first email to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me. Everyone that joins gets a one-on-one -on -one call with me where we're sitting on Zoom, we're deep diving into your particular situation because there isn't anybody with the same exact credit profile or situation as you. So I just want to understand who you are and what your goals are so I can point you in the right direction. Maybe you're ready to start credit stacking immediately within the program, then you don't need to watch module one and two. You need to go straight there, right? Your goals matter too. And I want you to accomplish those sooner than later. Um, you know, there's personal credit repair and establishment, business credit establishment, credit stacking for personal and business, and of course, travel hacking. Um, my team and I are always there to answer any and all questions in like the Facebook group and the chat. Um, and I also have two client success managers just all day helping people. Hey Scotty, do you have do you have a link that you can drop where they can actually just go and click um to get more information on this course and absolutely they can absolutely. just join from there, right? Um, yeah, I want to make sure everybody knows you know how to mm -hmm. how to get to your course and how to get to you. Of course, guys. Of course. Is there just and one then, like level in man, or is it like a tiered program or? Um, well, that is not. It's, it's not tiered. Yeah. yeah, I want to get. <laughs> everything away nice everything um i even um i even dropped the price drastically because i just i i want more people in it uh more people need this and i thought to myself when i was in the camper in the middle of woods in southeast kansas could i afford my program mm. i couldn't so i recently dropped the price universally so people just starting out can get in start at the very beginning People who own hedge funds and own over four hundred million dollars in real estate, mm. they need access to that credit as well. They need to know how to use it. Now I'm booking their trips, so wow, that's nice. yeah. Hey, hey Scott, Scotty, Scotty, question. 
I'm sorry, man. I, I know all of us are excited to keep. keep <laughs> I just want. I wanted to piggy. Question. I wanted to piggyback off of something he just said because, um, I, and I wanted to ask a question. You know, you have you you have people of varying degrees of of uh, where they are in their businesses. Knowing what you know now and doing what you've done, uh, and uh, in both the credit world and the business world, what advice would you have to people to use? essentially use your program and start their business from, from day one. I think, you know, it's always nice to get some sort of perspective from our guests and, okay, well, looking back, I would do this, this, and this, like, what would you go into real estate? Would you go into business? Where would you take that? I love that question. Thank you. So I actually yeah. created a real answering this. I would do exactly what I did, but faster. If I yeah. knew what I knew now, I would do it faster, right? All this credit stuff, that's how I was able to get in, but I failed at it. I succeeded at it. I had to learn it to do what I, you know, what I did throughout the entire time. Mm -hmm. I would do the same exact process, but probably be 10 X where I am today. If I knew what I knew now. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So just, you know, obviously I'm taking the course and we're going through the, the videos and everything. What is your preferred strategy on somebody that has enrolled in the class or in the course um, do you think it's best for them to take action as they go, or is it better for them to just go through the entire course and then go back and actually take action? What, what is, I, the way I try to communicate with the community is I want to be a brains for you. I want to make that decision for you. Right. So if you're going through it and you're in module one in the personal credit and you have a question, you should be able to reach out to us and we can advise you on what to do, when to do, how to do it and why. Um, because I don't want anybody to make mistakes. It's a very tight rope mm -hmm. industry. One mistake can be detrimental and slow you down drastically. So really the whole point of the program is for business owners at any level to not have to think about this. Mm -hmm. Allow us to do that for you. Yeah, no, that, you know what? That's a great point, man. Because I'm telling you, I... I think I almost shot myself in the foot when I was when I was told by this other credit card company or credit company to go ahead and apply for the business credit on these on these level two you know uh, accounts meaning mm -hmm. you know some of the bigger names and I just kept like I just kept going back to your course going this does not make sense man and I'm so glad I just I waited because the the last thing like you said last thing you want is to go out there and apply when you're not ready to apply right Right. So we actually have like an application process where um, people, let's just say you're in the credit stacking criteria. I have a video or am I ready to credit stack? And it goes through a bunch of checklists and whatnot. And if you checked all the boxes, great. You reach out to us and say, hey, I think I'm ready to credit stack. Can you help me? Absolutely. We're going to send you over a custom built credit stacking portfolio that we created um, you're going to fill out all the information and it gives me and my team a bird's eye view of what it is you have. And then I can literally just go in and say, okay, well, you know what, Juan should go after this card, this card, this card, this card, mm. average limits are here. Um, you know, it's 0% interest. You need to spend this much in the first three months. It's going to pull from this bureau. Yeah. Right. So we we're very hands-on and the, really the, it's not really a course because I don't want people to just watch the videos and go. I want you guys to watch the videos and have a conversation with us, but mm, you know, good. be at least aware of what we're talking about. So if I am saying some crazy verbiage, credit verbiage, you've watched the videos and you know what I'm talking about and you can immediately just go take action. Good. Okay. Love it. Yeah. Cool, man. man. So I got, I got one last uh, one last question. So I, I I went in, man, and I'm starting the process of signing up now. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess the the price that you're offering this is the universal price. There was somebody that asking, is there anything tiered or you know anything like that? I guess maybe for some people that don't don't have as much as others or or whatever, right? So is mm -hmm. is this link? It, it's the VIP, right? It, yeah, is that that, that is that is everything. That is everything. Okay. And a question here is just membership for life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool, man. I love that, man. I love that you're willing to explain all that. And man, I can't even uh, begin to tell you all the knowledge that you dropped. It's it's mind blowing, man. Like <clears throat> what's great is I think in business and you'll probably um, second that 
You know, as we grow as business owners and entrepreneurs over time, as much as I've learned, there is always something to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's great when you can step in a room with somebody that can really teach you some new stuff, man. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you for that. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I want to really piggyback really. off that as well. I mean, with the credit industry, so much is always changing. Um, I remember I not the course builder guru. I, I was totally against that. Um, but I vowed to those videos, Juan, if you go through the entire program, I bet you if you ran it back, there wouldn't be very many of the same videos that you've watched, right? Because this industry changes so many. Points change, offers change, bank rules change. Um, and it's our job to provide you guys with the knowledge, right? Because it's not your job to go study credit for the rest of your life. That's the point of the All in Credit VIP program. It's I good. love that, man. It's good. Yeah, I always, I always say, man, I, I tell this, I'm a vet, but when I, when I got injured in Iraq and I came out, I was a homeless vet, man, for four and a half years. And I, I can empathize with you in that. I am so lucky to have had people that poured into me and taught me things over time. And I love the fact that you are that guy, man. You are really that guy. You're, you're pouring into other people and teaching them what you know, man. Yeah. It, it, it's really great, man. Like, uh, it's awesome. A ton of value, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. To respect Scotty's time, he's a busy guy. Um, we got to end it here. But you have his Instagram. You have his Facebook. You have his all of his contact. You've got uh, where you can go to sign up for the program. Please, guys, go out and get involved and, and get with Scotty. And, uh, yeah, man, help, let, let him help you take flight in your business. We appreciate you, my friend, for coming on, man. <clears throat> um, tons and tons of knowledge dropped tonight. Um, and as always, we ask that you guys go out, um, not only like his socials, but like ours too. Go to Facebook, go to Instagram, uh, go to YouTube. Uh, we really, really ask that you go to YouTube and try to blow that channel up because as a group, we are trying to bring in entrepreneurs that are figuring out how to do it differently. Um, and, and grow your business, right? So we want to be able to offer that content to everybody um, forever, right? So yeah, go out there, guys, and join our socials, join his, and we appreciate you all, and thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Talk soon, everyone. Thanks, Scotty. Yep. See you guys. See you guys. See you guys. Thanks, Scotty.